for the Zags. Gonzaga now seven and two. Starting lineups brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. Pay bills, deposit checks, and access your accounts 24 7 with digital banking at Numerica Credit Union. And lineups look like this Jordan Minor leading the Warriors in scoring about 14 points a game. Strother, Nemhard, Bolton, Timmy, and Chet Holmgren, the starting five for Gonzaga tonight. Joe Gallo, the Warriors head coach. He was three years as an assistant, three years as a head coach with the Warriors. He's been with the team when they were Division II. Now they it's a nice test tonight for GU after struggling the last three games with the turnovers and turnovers and see how they do tonight taking care of the ball. Well, I wanted to say rebound, but I decided to say push the pace. Merrimack plays at a very slow pace. They only average about 55 points per game themselves. But pay attention closely to their defense. They're exclusively zoned. They'll get extended like Syracuse and really gamble at the top trying to create turnovers, get the other way. And there's a turnover. Well, Chad Holmgren saves it. Feed to Timmy. Drew. Drew. Up and through. Well, near turnover from Timmy, or excuse me, from Holmgren, which has been a little bit of a problem, but you like the fact that he didn't give up on the play. He ended up coming up with a loose ball. All right, the Warriors. This is Reed, a quick three. Holmgren, the rebound. Here's Andrew Nemhard, number three. Julian Strother, a talented sophomore. Julian will fire the three. And the long rebound goes to Malik Edney. That's the temptation against the zone is you're going to get those types of looks from three early in the possession. Take a little bit more time in that shot clock. Try to search out something better. And that shot for three is off. Strother the rebound. Gonzaga back in business. Up to nothing. Timmy. High low. Chet Holmgren. Chet has hit better than 80 percent of his field goals inside that three-point line to start this year <laughs> yeah, it's crazy number it's pretty good you're gonna see a lot of clock taken off of each possession from merrimack they do a nice job misdirection and playing deep into the clock and you, they try to get breakdowns defensively and Reed short on that shot. Holmgren the rebound. Here's Strother who picked up his dribble. And now Andrew Nemhard. He fires away. That's long. And the long rebound won by Mikey Watkins. Mikey is senior out of Russell, New Jersey, number five. And Ziggy Reed, number 23, watched by Drew Timmy. Reed down the paint into the corner and a whistle and a foul called and you can see right away the pace Merrimack's going to play only 57 points a game and they're going to take their time offensively and use the clock you've got to be patient defensively for you don't gamble or send a shoot over the top and then the turnover there and a chance for Bolton and a foul called and Rozier will go to the free throw line. And I know part of it was push the pace as a key. But it's going to be more difficult than expected because Merrimack sends four guys back in right. de defensive transition. One guy goes to the glass. Everyone else gets yeah, back. They, they only have 63 offensive rebounds in 10 games. They're not interested in trying to compete on the offensive glass. So it's a great point, Dan. They're going to get back and force you to try to def rather score against that zone. Yeah. And, and a lot of pushing the pace is also in the half court. Quick decisions, getting ball reversals, quick decisions with the basketball. When you have your opportunity, let it fly. If not, move it to the next guy. Bolton strips it away. Another chance. Two on one for the Zags. Bolton. Strother laying. Beautiful basketball in transition. And we've said it on a number of broadcasts, but Bolton has been almost turnkey in that backcourt. A really great addition. He's just so steady with the ball. Nine turnovers on the year. Does a good job knocking it down. 43. Uh, check that 46% from the three point line. He's been uh, as good as advertised. Shot from the elbow up and good by Ziggy Reed, the junior from Baltimore. Wow, that was a tremendous move. Had Drew Timmy spinning all sorts of ways. Go, 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 go. 
Nemhard, his second attempt from downtown. That one is short. Rebound battled for by Jordan Miner and Chet Holmgren. Miner winning that battle. Three of the first five shots from GU behind the arc. And relatively early in the clock. Watkins into the lane. A little runner goes six to four. And those threes a lot of times can be fool's gold, especially early in the game or early in a possession. I was at practice yesterday as Timmy gets a nice finish with deep post possession, but Coach Few's message was, look, we know they're going to play zone. We have to find open areas on the court, get the ball moving quickly, and we can't settle for threes in particular early in the clock. Zags have hit three of their first six shots. Holmgren, another block. His 36th this season. He averages 3.89 blocks a game. We have teams in the country that don't even average 3.9 blocks a game. He's going to get a bunch tonight. Their tallest player is 6'8. Occasionally we'll see a little three quarter court, kind of an annoyance press from Merrimack where they really just want to eat up some clock, and now you're getting into your offense against their zone at 20 on a shot clock or so. And Coach Gallo called it a fake or a phony press. And Chet Holmgren, there's your offensive rebound tip jam. Well, sometimes in a zone, you expose that backside. Chet Holmgren took advantage. And a shot for three is short, but a foul called. And I think feet were on the line by Ed Mead, so just two free throws when we come back. Gonzaga off to a 10 4 start. They've hit four of their first eight shots. Merrimack is battling. Ziggy Reed, the bucket there. Holmgren crashing the glass. Having some te technical difficulties. Hopefully, he'll be back in just a second. Hey, listen, I have enough of my own difficulties. Those were not my <laughs> technical difficulties. I'm just trying to fit in around here. Uh. I like doing those reads. Can I do some more? You're very professional at it. Thank you. Yeah. Here's Malik Edmead, the sophomore from Deer Park, New York, at the free throw line. Thanks to the 10 5 ball game. The unique thing about this Merrimack ball club is third year in Division One. Joe Gallo told us earlier today that. He has guys that he recruited basically thinking they were going to be a division two basketball player And now they're playing against the top five team in the country at the division one level They play Gonzaga here tonight in a great setting and then they go to Indiana right after this Another one of the great venues in college basketball Drew Timmy to the free throw line and he, you know, Drew's done a nice job by Ziggy Reed and I apologize. Drew's done a nice job tonight. He's put the ball on the deck, but he's gone in other words, it's been a quick dribble right into a move. I think at times and it's you know difficult to, to to criticize a guy who's this good, but sometimes you start seeing that kind of pound the rock a little bit, trying to back a guy down. He's been very decisive tonight. Michael Deering, a junior from Boston, Massachusetts, on the floor for Merrimack. Timmy makes it a 12-5 game. Drew with six points. Hunter Salas, number 10. Two freshmen on the floor for Gonzaga. Here's Reed. Azure Bolton trying to fight through the screen. Now he's chasing the switch. Devin Jensen. And Miner for three is long. Bolton, the rebound. Good Zags defense. Oh, they missed. Holmgren on a quick, easy steal. Him. Nemhart reversed it a little too quick. And uh, Coach she's telling Timmy the same thing. You've got Holmgren right there. If you can see his numbers, you deliver the ball. As or, a as a post player like yourself, how frustrating was it when you had a deep seal and an angle and the ball would get reversed the other direction? You know, I would say something uh, about that. But you, know, I mean, you understand sometimes is you see the tough layup inside from Watkins. You know, sometimes you're you're in a play and the ball's going to keep moving. But yeah, as a post player, if I'm working to get good position, deep position, and I'm showing you my numbers, give me the ball. Let's give Watkins some credit on that finish a moment ago. Did you see yeah, how high nice. he threw that right over over Holmgren. the top of Holmgren? 
Transition three is up. Holmgren battling for the rebound. Miner won it. Putt back goes. 12-9. Miner, their leading scorer on the season. The last five games, he's been tremendous. 18 points, nearly nine rebounds per game. He is going to be a handful in the Northeast Conference. Here's Hunter Salas, and now Bolton. Rajir, that's a deep three. And rebound knocked out of play, remains with GU. Here comes Anton Watson, Nolan Hickman. Bolton and Holmgren out for GU. You see Miner working on the glass. Misses the initial bunny, but sticks with it. There's a good job. Last two years, Miner's averaged nearly three offensive rebounds. Again, that's a bit down this year, but he's got that in his bag. Attacking the offensive class. Timmy trying to go to Watson there, but Jensen shoot it. You're filled the lane. Jensen fires the three. Hunter Salas up high for the rebound. Outlet to Hickman. Here's Nemhard. Watson. And now Nolan Hickman. 15 feet away. Salas on the weak side. Put back goes. Love it. I love everything about that possession. Get it to the nail. And then Hickman, who's been shooting it pretty well as of late. Shot fake one dribble pull out pull up a lost art in the game of basketball at times in my opinion and Salas on the glass Great anticipation there by Andrew Nemhard. And I just heard in my ear there from the great Chauncey Jones that Purdue has now fallen from the wow. list of unbeatens Who'd they lost, lose to? At the, lost at the buzzer against Rutgers Rutgers huh? Rutgers Wow the Big Ten. I wonder if they're going to have a bunch of teams in the tournament and stumble again this year. Watson the steal. Here's Hunter Salas waiting for help. Nice job from Salas just to jump stop there. Here's Timmy. Salas faked the three into the corner. Nemhard, no look. Watson the flush from the baseline. And there we see yes. Andrew Nemhard. You beat me to it. That was. Andrew Nemhart vision against UCLA, but Watson, nice finish. He played really well against Alabama. He did. Duke as well. Three games back. That's the best possession so far tonight for GU. The ball was swung. Quick decisions. Leads to the easy two. Number 31, Justin Connolly on the floor for the Warriors. He's got the ball now. Reed. Barry's three over Watson. Half his shots, over half his shots come from behind the arcs. Struggling this year, 21%. You know, that's a big bucket, though, for Merrimack. If they get anything behind the three point line, you know, that's a huge benefit. Ziggy Reed with five, Watson inside. Through Timmy. And he is fouled. 11 21 to play here in the first half. Purdue losing to Rutgers 70 68 the final Watson the flush Zags up by four 16 12 Everybody called him. that guy Michael Jordan See Hall beat Texas guys 64 60 but that game on the road for the Longhorns too So they've got a couple of losses, but they lost here and now at Seton Hall I think we're gonna have one of those years when you don't want to be ranked number one because oh you always there's want to so be much parity well, of course you want to be ranked number one, but I'm saying it's kind of that curse. You get ranked number one and you get knocked off. Nemhard from 17. It's like the Wheaties box curse or the Madden curse. Wheaties box curse? I've never heard of that one. Well, it exists. <laughs> it is, trust me, Dan. <laughs> Trying to get know, you gotta, down a rabbit hole. No, you just got to get out of bed a little earlier. <laughs> There's Connolly. Spins on Timmy. Jensen backdoor cut. Deflection out of bounds by Timmy. Well, well, well. Gosh, college basketball. Fantastic, isn't it? Just fantastic, Dan. Any of, given night. A lot of great storylines this season. Zags seven of nine inside the arc as that one falls off for Jordan Minor. But they're 0 for 4 from three. I say throw it inside. Well, Merrimack 30% from the three point line. That is not an area of strength. Timmy, just a simple play. 
pivot, little kind of mini jump hook slash floater. I like the fact he's re not relied on the bounce yes. to get in, into a shot tonight. You say a simple play. Go out and try that and see how many in 10 you make. Well, he, he makes, makes it look, look simple. So no, that's a fair point. Yeah. And the battle at midcourt. Battle ensues. Taken away by Watson. Salas trying to keep possession. It'll go to Merrimack. Well, you love that effort. Multiple bodies on the floor. Watson, Timmy, Salas. Love the effort. Salas can't keep it in. We have an injured warrior. It's Mikey Watkins. Trying to fight through the pain right now. And he'll make it his way over to the bench. He'll be back. I can already tell. He's from Roselle, New Jersey. He's got a little hockey in him. I can tell. I can tell by looking at this comment. He'll be back. He'll be back. I love that guy. As long as we're not talking about sweat tonight, I'm good. <laughs> There's Jordan Miner at his best. Miner now with four. He's two of seven. Oh, Here's Watson through Timmy. High low game working for the Zags tonight. And Timmy will shoot free throws. We you know it's a subtle play, but Watson gets the ball at the top key. Simple ball fake as if he's going to continue swinging the ball. It just shifts that defense enough. It makes it a much easier pass inside to Timmy. That defense is already rotating. Through Timmy. So good. And Watkins checking right back in. I told you. Got a little right wing in him. I believe it. You can see the hockey. Like you've got like a radar. It oozes from him. You have a radar for yes. the hockey team. Yep. Uh, he, he, I put him on the right wing. You know, Dan, if you notice, he's never described us as no yeah. having hockey in us. Yeah. Well, Richard, you'd have to be the goalie. <laughs> Nothing's getting by him. <laughs> Dan, Dan, not nearly tough enough. We know that. Well, you saw my hockey highlight from a couple of years ago. <laughs> Watson guarding the ball and now Strother. Edmead with a drive. Got all the way in. And Julian Strother calling for his second personal foul. See how methodical Merrimack is. And Edmead coming off a nice game against Brown. 18 minutes, 16 points. Really efficient, 5 of 10. And he's really improved from the three point line. Last year, really, you just had to defend his drive. This year, shooting better than 32% from three. Dead meet a 69% free throw shooter. Got the start tonight. Normally, Mike Caldering starts at that position, but Joe Gallo told us he wanted a couple of point guards in this game. Let me ask you guys this question Alabama beat Gonzaga with a lot of guards on the floor. We're going to see more of that this year. Force Coach Few to make a choice. Do we put Holmgren and Timmy on the floor together? Or what, what will we see? I think a lot of that is how college basketball is trending as Watson gets himself fouled in the free throw line. The best Gonzaga teams in years past have played two point guards, two ball handlers, decision makers, guys that can shoot it, pass it, create for others and themselves. But what you're seeing is a lot of teams are going to the extreme like Alabama. They'll play four guards, space the floor, attack you off the bounce. Their whole goal, Alabama's, was... Get into the paint for a layup. If the defense collapses, kick it to an open shooter. If the defense rotates quick, put the defense in swing, swing, rotation situations until you get an open three. It just so happened Alabama got hot in that first half. Shackelford, I mean, 28 points on the night. He was smoking impressive. Yeah. And then J.D. Davidson, the freshman. I mean, the career night. Basically. Career night, 20 points. He is not known as a three-point shooter right now. Gonzaga played him as a driver, and he hits four threes. Yeah, 25% going into that game. And I think if, if you play that game again, I don't think Gonzaga nice changes pass. their coverage on J.D. Davison. Hickman off the front. But I would say they would change their coverage on Shackelford as far as 
finishing out the scouting report. Guys were there, but they weren't there. You have to truly be there against a great shooter. Look, make the free throws. He missed six. The front end of six one and one. Just Timmy off another nice time from Watson makes the layup. They missed six. The front end of six one and ones. You turned it over 15 times and led to 20 points off yeah. those turnovers. Make your free throws. Cut your turnovers down by five. You probably win that game. Yeah. Probably. I think they do. Miner with a drive on Timmy. And now a chance for three. Number one on Drew Timmy. 25 18. Zags defense. And man, what a season Anton Watson's having for the Zags. Love that guy. It's 1.15 a.m. and time for another classic hit. Sweetness. It's good to see you, Dad. How are you doing? Uh, better than now that I'm with you. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. You're my trooper. Hi. Getting control uh, back yeah, is living hungry. proof. What would you like to eat? Oh, a the AHN Neuroscience Institute. This is cellulose acetate, a plant-based material that's not only extremely durable, but also quite flexible, making it ideal for Warby Parker glasses, which, by the way, start at $95, including prescription lenses. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. Oh, yeah, about those prescription lenses. Warby Parker glasses come standard with custom-cut polycarbonate lenses that have been treated with scratch-resistant and anti-reflective coatings. Nice. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. I'm attorney David Schrager. If you or a loved one have been charged with a crime, you may be in for the fight of your life. Whether you've been wrongly accused or simply made a bad choice, call my law firm for a free consultation. Don't be scared. Be prepared. The Pens return to AT&T Sportsnet for a home matchup with the Ducks, Saturday at 6. Rookie center, we're a bit of a game here. Gonzaga up 7 here in the first half. And let's take a look at... Primera coverage of the game. Gonzaga coverage of the game is brought to you by Primera. Primera proud, punk, proud partner. Gonzaga Bulldogs. And you see the dime from Nebhard and the nice finish from Watson. No, so see, Richard, if you're going to do the read, yeah. you hand it off, okay. right? See, I don't know. You, you, you got to teach me this. You don't select. do the read and then the analysis. Okay. Like, okay. you don't get it all. Okay, that's okay. thick. Okay. Ne next read. Okay. Next read, I'll read it. And now, do you actively hand it off or just stop talking to someone else? I don't. Dick out gets paid per minute or per <laughs> word, right? Oh, okay, my okay. bad. Like, he just then I better start talking he just, like, just cost him money. <laughs> yeah, right. you just cost him cash. Next read, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better. Listen to how critical he is. I appreciate it. I like getting coached. And what do you mean I'm next coachable. read? What, what, that was your chance. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, made the comment that I think Anton Watson's having a great year. He's got three points, three steals, a rebound in this game. It's been solid. He has, Winning look, plays. He's tied for second on the team with 23 assists. He's done a decent job not turning it over. 11 steals on the year. He's become the player I think the three of us thought he'd be. Versatile, can do a little bit of everything. He's not going to be a scorer, uh, but for the most part, he just makes those winning plays. And the turnover. And Watson now one of six from that three point line, but talking to Coach Few coming into the season, Antoine made a huge jump in the offseason. No shooting the three, I'm telling you. Before the season's out, he's going to start burying the three-point shot. Okay. <laughs> and Holmgren, another block. I mean, you think you're by him at the rim, and he just extends and comes up with a block shot. Oh, and Holmgren running the floor. Another offensive putback. He's really good, too. <laughs> There's Watkins. lots of those really good players. And another block by Holmgren, his third. I think if, if, if Holmgren can just get a little bit better defensively. <laughs> oh, man. Just 
I sense some sarcasm there. Yes, Richard. yes. It's, it's subtle, but it's there. Jordan McCoy with the inbound right in front of us. 6.35 to play in this first half. Shot for three. That's off the front of the rim by Jordan Miner. Another chance for Andrew Nemhard. Nolan Hickman. Here's Anton Watson. Double team. Bolton. Catch by Holmgren. A lot of contact down there. And a foul. Inside. Good time to talk about the fact that the game against the University of Washington, gentlemen, has already been canceled on Sunday. Washington experiencing some COVID issues. They've not played a few games now. So what does that mean for Gonzaga is now their next game? They've got, I don't know, I think it's 10 days off now before they play Texas Tech. Yeah, Texas Tech has a chance. They may be ranked. They just beat Tennessee as Watson misses the three. But, you know, it's a regional game that I think creates a lot of excitement. UW, not as good as they have been in years past, but they definitely get excited to play the Zags. I know our friend Eldridge Rickasner was getting ready to fire off some interesting text yeah. messages. If he, Eldridge is listening to this game, you're welcome. <laughs> there you see on December 18th, they'll play Texas Tech for taking on Northern Arizona. Dun, dun, dun. That's the Lumberjacks. North, that's north of the, the Grand Canyon, Arizona. Is that north or south of the Grand Canyon? Oh my gosh! Watson missing that shot there. Stumped him. No, no, no I, I've been to both. I've actually been to Flagstaff. I've been to the Grand Canyon, Dan. <laughs> Why don't you use your little Google machine there and look it up so you can know? I was asking you. Eight-point game. Watkins with a drive off the glass. Finish. Nice finish. Second tough finish of the night from Watkins. Watkins 5'11". Still finds a way to finish around the bucket. Told you he's tough. Watson. Couldn't catch it cleanly. Great feed. Home grin. And Chet going back to the free throw line. Actually, these are his first free throws of this game. Let's take a look at what we just saw by Watkins. There's Watkins, just a nice rip through. It would have finished through a little bit of contact, get the ball off the glass. He's had a nice first half. Six points is Watkins. How do you defend that play better? Well, when you're guarding up top, you have to influence or force one direction. He's obviously a right-handed driver. He's gone right and multiple times. You would think you would influence and force him to the left and have help ready to go in the gaps um, But the thing is is Watkins quick. He's shifty. He started at the two the last couple of years this year He's playing more of a point guard role for Merrimack. So he's got that scorers mentality when openings show up for him you Guys Zags 8 of 10 from the free throw line tonight if they would have shot at this rate against Alabama They win that game yeah, not, the Alabama game was lowest free throw percentage they've had since 2015 when taking over 25 free throws. So just an off night. I mean, sometimes you just it don't play well. Night. Yeah. Holmgren, great catch. Can't and finish. I, I'd like him just to take the first one. Yes. There's no reason to put the ball on the floor. No one's going to bother your shot. And again, Watkins and. Hickman get tied up and a foul called on Mikey Watkins. So right here, just that that's the shot. Yes. Just take the shot. Miner's not ask? gonna bother you. And then you put it on the floor that allows the defender to, to get physical with you and that help to come down. I think sometimes he just puts the ball on the floor too often. Why does he shoot it with one hand? Why doesn't he just well it's almost as if he was caught between a jump shot or a hook. Yeah. You got you know, pick one, but I, I just I like that little you know 15 footer for him. Well, that's you, the you've soft got a, spot in most zones. Yeah. That nail area, catch, turn, face. They don't close out. As just as you mentioned, shoot over the top. He's a good enough shooter that that is a horse shot for him with defense not there. Nine point Gonzaga lead. Nolan Hickman now with two points. Hickman played well. Yeah, back home did. in front of his friends and family in Seattle. Nine points against Alabama. He's been good all year. Yes. And he's playing more and more. And quite frankly, I think having him on the floor 
It really helps us. You see Jensen knock down the three. It really helps Nemhard having Hickman on the floor because more so than Bolton, Hickman has more of those point guard qualities. Yes. Hickman, deep three. And a foul on the rebound inside. I believe this is on number 14, Jensen. Warriors hanging in, aren't they? 30 to 24, 350 to play. First half. Jensen, the three bomb. Back in a moment. Quite in midseason form yet. <laughs> well, how long do we have to wait? Come know, on. Exactly. This is what, game 10? Hey, Greg, you've been great. You're doing good. Well, what a transition. Coach Gallo told us on the phone today. He said three years ago to the day. <laughs> They were playing a Division II game yeah. in front of 27 great. fans. Now yeah. tonight they're <laughs> sold out McCarthy Athletic Center. He said he loves his program. There's challenges being in its infancy in Division I, but he's really happy to be there. He likes the progress they've made. And really the, it was the question, Coach, how did you sell to your kids coming to the McCarthy Athletic Center, one of the hardest places to play in all the college basketball to face number five? And he brought up that example. It was a great answer. <laughs> yes. Well, it's that or playing in front of 27 people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that makes sense. I enjoyed our conversation today with Joe Gallo. Energetic guy. Hanging in there right now against number five, Gonzaga. They pour 17 turnovers a game. And 76 points is the most that they have allowed all season long. Zags with 32. Here's Reed. Free throw line jumper is off. Bolton clears it. Bolton backing up. Getting back in defensive transition and getting into a zone is very difficult. They do a tremendous job. Of doing just that and taking away opportunities. Love the catch by Drew Timmy down there. Great hands. Yeah, I mean, great catch. His footwork, his ability to catch balls in traffic. There's a nice job of just holding his position. Conley can't do anything with him. He let the ball come to him. In other words, he didn't release that contact and go get the ball. He let the ball come. He already had the position he wanted. Gets himself to the line. And Drew. Dialed in at the free throw line tonight. He's five of five in this game. And he's uh, for the season came in at 65%, 39 of 60. He's a better free throw shooter than 65%. Oh, without a doubt. You know, he worked diligently in the offseason to expand his range to the three point line, but yet to this season, he hasn't been able to show it. Only a one of eight. Uh, but, you know, he's a such a unique and great player on the low post sometimes people look at perceived warts in your game want you to work on them but why go away from your strengths when they're so dominant Watson Timmy another catch and off the glass just a quick dribble gets over that left shoulder and Watson with another nice delivery from that high post he's been really good here in the first half Timmy two points from his single game average Got 16. And a big time collision there. Anton Watson. All the winning plays for Gonzaga. Foul called on Jordan Minor. I'm not sure about this one, boys. That's two big dudes right here, though. Bang. That is not. <laughs> I'm, I'm with Richard. That's and not I like Anton Watson, too. but. Oh, that's not an offensive foul. That's, oh, a, that's, that's a great call. Come on. That's Some a, people would call you a homer, Greg. Well. If you're calling. <laughs> they got to get rid of that, man. I, I've never seen an official change his mind. That was a great call. <laughs> <laughs> 2 15 to play. And the turnover. Turnover number seven by Gonzaga. Baseline jumper short from Jordan McCoy. And now Timmy leads the break. Nemhard Bolton from 17. Roger Bolton now with four points, his first field goal. Oh, great lift fake. And then just one dribble to create space. Lost art. 
Timeout called. Buck 47 to play here in the first half. Gonzaga on an 8 0 run. And now Merrimack has not scored in better than two minutes, 22 seconds. They make mistakes. Now the fact is, how do they learn from those mistakes and, and gain experience from those? I think we're seeing a great approach tonight after losing against Alabama. And mistakes are one thing, Richard. Chemistry is another. That takes time to develop. And that's what's always been here at GU is incredible chemistry. Yeah, but look, they've got a good culture here. That's that's here every year. You know, it, there's a lot of moving pieces every year. I think they're also having to play a bit differently this year with how dominant Timmy is, the insertion of Holmgren into what they're trying to do as Greg has checked in the game and you know, Watkins, Watkins gets around him. I think the young guys have been fine, to be perfectly honest with you. I think they have done what they've needed to do. They're only going to keep getting better. Um, I think with the adjustment as Hickman turns it over is for some of these older guys now having bigger roles, Nemhard being one of them, is just learning how to play with uh, in those new roles. That's just going to take time. Connolly fouled by Ben Gregg. Chance for three for Connolly with 58.1 seconds to play. Here in the first half, 10 point game. A little turnover kind of leads here to controlled transition opportunity, and Greg with some bad luck here on back, back to back possessions gives up a couple tough layups around the rim. Connolly, a senior from Melrose, Massachusetts. 6 7, 2 10, 3 point play, 9 point game. Drew Timmy leading Gonzaga with 16. Anton Watson with five. Holmgren with five. Rajir Bolton with four. There's a host of Zags with two. And there's two so more good. for Timmy. He's, He's got, got 18. <laughs> got foul going up, too. But again, one dribble. Yeah. Get right into my move. A perfect six of six from the field. Six of six from the line as well. Ten seconds difference between the two clocks. James Berry, number 13 on the floor for the Warriors. Reed. Hand off. Edme. Six on the shot clock. Trying to get to a soft spot. Missed the jumper. Watson the rebound. Zags with plenty of time. Great oh, pass. what a great pass to Drew Timmy. And who is it? Anton number 22. Watson. Anton Watson. Edme at the horn. And the big bucket quiets the crowd for the moment. 42-31, gentlemen, our score at the half. You hate giving that up right before the half, don't you? Yeah, but look, all in all, I just keep feeding him. I'd like to see Drew get like a 50-point night before he's done here at GU. Well, that 37-point effort against Texas was... Pretty Close. dang impressive earlier this season. Third highest point total in this building. I want to see Fitty. Okay. Here we go. Strother, Holmgren, Timmy, Bolton, and Nemhard. Bolton with the defense. Timmy with the rebound. Missed there by Jordan McCoy. Gonzaga with a chance. Bolton looking for his first three. That's off. Crash of the boards. Won by Jordan Miner. Edmead. Runner inside. Too hard. Got it back. How do you get that back? Twelve on the shot clock. Strother fights oh, through wow. the screen. Edmead got by Timmy, but missed the shot again. Timmy's slow to get up. Stomps on his foot. Holmgren lines up the three and connects. Gonzaga with their first three-point make of the game. They're now one of eight. Well, Holmgren now eight of 24 on the year. About 30-some-odd percent. Look. I think Drew Timmy turned his left yeah, ankle. Yeah, I to see that. He's, he's stomping on his leg over there trying to get the pain out of it. Which kind of defies logic a little bit to me. Well, he's got a little hockey in him, Greg. I'm sure he'll be No, fine. no, no. That dude's got a lot of hockey. <laughs> He'd be my centerman. That's what Drew Timmy would be. I'd put him right at center. And then I put this Watkins guy on my right wing. <laughs> We're looking for a left winger. We're not sure. Maybe Bolton. I think Bolton would be a good left winger. 
And Drew Timmy will go to the free throw line. I tell you, Timmy's got a lot of Texas in him, doesn't he? He's, a tough He's kid. so tough. Tough kid. I get the image of him that plays basketball on the weekdays and he rides bulls on the weekends. Yeah, he twisted the ankle there. He did. How many times do you think of a high level basketball player? How many times did you guys turn ankles, do you think, in your basketball life? Weekly. Yeah. yeah all the time. I it's, still, an, it's an amazing joint, really. I, I it just keeps coming back. I still uh, twist him now for no reason other than I'm just walking around as we see uh, Timmy just missed his first free throw. Yeah, but climbing up the charts here, double figure scoring games uh, consecutively 33. It's a nice list of oh, games. Oh, and it's with another putback third of the night. So Drew was 6-6 six six from the line, missed two. But Holmgren there to help out his teammate. To get the points anyway. Watkins. Four on the shot clock. Miner drives, put his head down into Holmgren. Never got the ball to the rim. Here's Bolton. Nemhard into the corner. Strother transition three. Gonzaga now two of nine from downtown, both coming here in the opening minutes of the second half, and they've extended their lead to 19. Well, Strother's been playing very well as of late. Finally gets on track here. Get out of transition. Line, over, actually, over, over seven yeah, for six in the first half, and then two of three here in the in the second half. At this rate, you should just call it the Chet Holmgren Freshman of the Week Award. <laughs> just name it after <laughs> yeah. the guy. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I'd be down with that. Here's McCoy. Reed. Say <laughs> Watkins is quick. He's everywhere on the floor. Oh, wow, tough finish for Miner. Nice reverse. Miner with nine. Great feed. Strother, he'll reverse at the other end. He can score on all three levels. We saw it a second ago from the three point line in transition. He's got a pull up game, but that's where, I mean, he differentiates himself from every other wing on this team is his ability to get to the rim and finish with his size. And Reed from downtown. Second of the night, Reed, behind the arc. But for Strother, I think the next evolution is getting the line more consistent. I yeah. think it's about three free throws a game. Lost the handle. Great catch. Got to get up faster. Watkins. And he lost the grip. Here's Nemhard. Strother transition three on the way. Kicked out. Strother battles in the corner. Collision over there between Deering and Bolton. And a foul is called on uh, Mikey Watkins. Jordan McCoy out of the game. So is Miner. Connolly and Jensen back on the floor for more Merrimack. Nemhard lob. Miss Chet. Turnover number nine for GU. And Strother was there to make that shot too tough for Ziggy Reed. Bolton losing the grip out of bounds. 15 37 to play. Gonzaga's lead growing now up to 52 36 over the Merrimack Warriors, but both teams still fighting. Jordan Miner the reverse. And then Strother with a great cut. And he used the other side of the. Five and a half minutes in here in the second half. What have you seen? I've seen a lot of good stuff. I'll tell you that. I've seen Drew Timmy all world. Still perfect from the floor. 7-7, seven 20 points. Zag's really heating it up on the offensive end, Dan. Starting to hit some threes. Creating some turnovers, some runouts. 
It's a roll reversal. I love it. I love it. Greg, nice turn. Richard Fox. I'll break it down. And Richard, the critique is in your email. <laughs> nice job on the read. But we can do better. I'm going to get better. Okay, read. On the baseline, Bolton right there. Left hand won't go. And Bolton runs it down for Gonzaga with a head of steam. My goodness. He's so fast. Trailing. Holmgren. Another three. Jet Holmgren with 13. Nice response from behind the arc. Oh, four the other night against Alabama. He's done a nice job taking his time on those three-point shots. I think sometimes he gets rushed from behind the arc. Tonight, he's taking enough time to really set himself and shoot the shot. I guess the question is, Chet's only going to play one game this week with the cancellation on Sunday. As he earns another rebound, he's got 13 and 9 now. Is one game enough to win freshman of the week again? He keeps playing the way he is tonight, I would imagine so. There's Deering. There's so many lofty expectations placed on him. It's impressive how well he's really acclimated himself to college basketball. Yeah, we can nitpick with different things. I do think he turns it over a little bit much at times, but they're honest mistakes trying to make plays for teammates. I love how unselfish he is. As Timmy continues his quest for perfection from the field. Again. Just a quick, decisive move. A good entry pass from Nemhard. One, two dribbles quick over that shoulder, and that's what makes him so difficult. He can he can score over either shoulder, and he's got a counter or two, depending on what you do defensively. Drew to the line. Now 22 points, eight of eight from the floor, six of eight from the line, four rebounds. Short on that free throw. He's missed three in a row now. And Hunter Salas runs down the long Jinx, rebound. Greg, you mentioned it. I know I did. I think Richard did from the line. Yeah. We apologize, Drew. Uh, Strother. Merrimack basketball. What is the magic at the free throw line? How can you hit seven in a row? How can this team be so good tonight? 14 of 19, but shot 55% over two games. Is it a lack of concentration? What is it? Well, a lot of it is just rhythm. What is it? You know, stepping up with confidence and doing your free throw routine the same thing over and over again, whether it's the first possession of the game and or whether it's, you know, a tight ball game down the stretch with fans hollering at you. Hickman. Baseline, guys. And the foul call. <laughs> foul call on Connolly. That's number three, Timmy. With the catch, trying to create space. Ball was poked away. And now Nolan Hickman with it. He was so tough. Strother three. Strother. Strother. Strother with a knockdown, but that was tremendous creation off the pick and roll from Hickman. Snake dribble off of that pick and roll and then collapse the D in the five. He just sees the floor so well for a young guy. Twelve forty to play. Three on the way off the line by Michael Deering. Merrimack just two of 14 shooting this second half, one of six from behind the three point line. Wow. And Strother, two more. He's got 12. How about the pass? Well, you guys were Who's both that high from? on Watson in the first half. He's continued a, a nice evening. Tom Watson's a baller. 12.05 to go. Jensen and Drew Timmy his sixth rebound. Timmy tried to go to Watson. Turnover number 12 for GU. 62 36 to score. Anton Watson. 
dropping dimes. Julian Strother the finish. I guess history. All a lot of her games back in the day. She and Heather Bowman were awesome. There you see John Stockton's number retired. Adam Morrison up there. I'm sure someday Dan Dickow will be up there. <laughs> Don't put my name in that conversation, Greg. Oh, well, that's for one of our podcasts. Let's get on the podcast <laughs> so we can have that discussion live. Next week, let's do it, fellas. Yeah, I'm in. All right, all right, I'm in. Merrimack now without a field goal in five minutes. Well, I want to go back to the WCC. There are four really good teams at the top of this conference. USF, you mentioned 10 and 0. Jamari Bouye, I mean, he comes back for next year for Todd Golden. He is playing extremely well. Ed Mead. Great leave. Shot missed by Watkins. And Holmgren takes it away. Chet now a double double. 13 points, 10 rebounds, and once again, the WCC Player of the Week. <laughs> the Chet freshman, Holmgren, freshman, freshman player of the Week. Of the week. <laughs> Anton Watson spins baseline, won't go. Holmgren, another rebound, tried to flush it, it's poked away. And now Edme. Reed transition three. Boy, he gets that shot off <laughs> quick. Then they say he read. No hesitation either. For he shoots 21 percent from on the three point line tonight. Uh, he's taken seven, or rather eight three point shots. It's a good name too, Ziggy Reed. Strother deep three short. Anton Watson rebound put back. Anton with seven points. Six rebounds, four assists. So well rounded. Zag's done a good job on minor tonight. Nine points, but on four of 13 shooting. Average of 18 of the last five is dancing the first half. That's a thick kid. Another block for Holmgren. Miner got it back and somehow <laughs> dropped it through. Just, and a chance for three. How did that even get up there? Just muscled it up through Holmgren. Here's the initial block from Holmgren. 50 50 play here, and Miner ends up with it and goes up strong right through Holmgren. There you see they move Holmgren off the block and they will knock down the layoff. Jet with four blocks in this game. Nine twenty-six to play. The Cheesecake Factory has been tradition over the years for yes. this broadcast team when we go to the Slim Jim. Because we go to the Slim Jim and then we go right to the Cheesecake Factory. Jordan Miner at the line. When's Spokane going to get a Cheesecake Factory? Uh, that is a kind of franchise ran restaurant that would yeah, do well here. I'm not sure Cheesecake's trying to expand right now. Chick-fil-A is doing phenomenal on the north side. Hunter Salas to Hickman. There's Watson now. Oh, what a find a Strother. <laughs> and a chance for three. That's dynamic and beautiful, isn't it? Oh, he understands. He's been in the program now for three years, does Watson. He understands where the situation should occur against the zone. And Richard just kind of gave me a ball fake action here on broadcast row. And he's exactly right. Shift the defense with a ball fake and then find your teammate. Oh, oh, I, I just I, wish there I, was I, a camera. How on was us. my technique? So, <laughs> yeah, it was good, Richard. No, but yeah, it's, it, it is the simplest thing to do, and Watson is this con is the most consistent of the uh, of GU's guys of using that ball thing, particularly against uh, a zone defense, and it just it does wonders. It just shifts the defense enough to open up those passing lines. Well, great coaching at the high school level from Matty McIntyre at G Prep, as well as John Stockton. In the AAU ranks. 
John Stockton was known for great ball fakes. All time assist leader. There wasn't anything he didn't do well, was it? No. Hickman. 12 on the shot clock. Bounce to Watson. Pass was poked. Nice feed up. And the finish by Miner. How about that pass in transition from Edme? Off a turnover for GU. Zagging out with 15 turnovers. Eighth straight game for Gonzaga guys with 10 or more turnovers. Of course, few. Telling Andrew Nemart, settle down. I don't think it's necessarily settle down. It's make the correct play. I mean, he tried to thread it through a small window at chest height. He'd throw that up towards the rim where only Watson could have caught and finished or kick it out to the three-point shooter. Bolton's three. Long. Minor battles for the rebound. Outlet to Deering. Left it for Reed. Under eight to play. And Zaga looking for their eighth victory of the season. Purdue losing tonight against Rutgers. Will the Zags be moving back up in the polls come Monday? Hickman shot is off. Watson the offensive rebound and put back. Anton Watson with nine points. Eight rebounds as well. Closing in on a second zag to have a double-double. You don't have to call a play for the kid. No, you're right. Guys, I'm talking more about turnovers. Gonzaga with 15. But they're bigs. Chet Holmgren and Drew Timmy with eight of those 15 between the two of them. Yeah, and that's been an issue all year. And that shot was affected by Holmgren. He'll do that far more than block shots in a game. He'll just alter. The fake missed the three. Watson pokes it back out to him. Chet now. Hickman's three is off. And the rebound into the corner to Ziggy Reed. That's the difference. That three-point shot for Holmgren. He's got two bodies near him. He's got an open guy on the wing. Just an extra pass. The first two threes he knocked down. He's wide open. Can take his time. Drew Timmy will be checking back in with 22 points for GU. Next whistle is Watkins. Reed runs down the errant dribble. And now the drive, and Watson with the block shot, but foul is called. And slow to get up is Ziggy Reed, but man, Watson right up there to high point that ball. Anton Watson having a great game tonight for GU. 9.36 shooting, 9 rebounds, 5 assists. Get in and let them make the next correct decision. And it's been evident tonight against his zone that high post area. If you're home, Grin, Timmy, or Watson, you've got to make yourself bigger. Get your hands up, make yourself available. So often, if you watch them in this offense, those bigs when they're on the high post, their hands are down by their waist. You got, you know, you know this, Dan. You've got to provide the guard with the target. Yes. Well, and as a as a guard. A guard who's truly in control of the game and the possession. You're not throwing the ball if you don't think the person is ready to catch it. Ziggy Reed with 13 points. How do you handle it with your team? If they're a bit turnover prone. How do you fix that? A lot of veteran players on this floor. Here's Holmgren three. I think a lot what do of you do? With done in practice with drill work of putting them in situations where they have to read and react, make the correct decision, uh, showing them a lot of film. That was actually a, a set coming out of that timeout. They tried to run a lob to Hunter Salas, something that we did to Casey Calvary way back when. Merrimack did a nice job taking it away. Look, hey, at some point it's on you. Me? No, no, the player. Yes, oh, okay. you. Really? And you, and you were looking at me. <laughs> no, but it's just, you know, it's always uh, the staff's got to do this, and Coach Few needs to do, say this. No, no, no. At some point, you're here for a reason you're good. You can't make these mistakes. Holmgren got his own miss back. Dumped it through. I mean, I can show you the film. I can show you the team scoring off the turnovers. But until you take ownership... In value in the basketball, it's going to be a problem. You know the other way that coaches can get players' attention? Here's the bench. Have a seat. 
<laughs> Give someone else a turn. I had a coach who loved to use the baseline. Go run. <laughs> Which Go was baseline. the wow. worst thing, right? Well, there was a oh. Arkansas Pine Bluff the other day, half uh, timeout. Their coach made four or five guys run that. sprints. Yeah. That's that is bit, unheard of, and that is a too the game. much. Yes. During the game. That's a bit ridiculous. And Salas moving well without the ball in the finish. He's really done a nice job of learning. The ball's not going to be in your hand a ton this year. Find the opportunistic chances to score just Look, such yeah. as that. He's a different talent than, say, a guy like Watson, but he... He approaches the game a lot like Anton does now, which is I'm not going to get a lot of stuff called for me. I've got to find other ways to make an impact. Watkins had to go way up over Holmgren with that attempt. Nemhard finds Bolton in transition. Holmgren crashes the board, missed it. And now Drew Timmy tying up Watkins. And the possession arrow will keep it with GU. 3.58 to play. And we are at a timeout. 73-49 our score. Holmgren. The vision to Hunter Salas. Freshman to freshman. Me as a guard, I never really focused on the rebound numbers like you would have. <laughs> no, I, plus 30 is a big number. Holmgren, six offensive rebounds. Merrimack, just seven collectively. Good defense there on the inbound by Ziggy Reed to deflect it. So that back out of bounds. Your eye goes to Hickman, but that's not on Hickman. That's on Watson <laughs> creating that space and creating an area for the ball to go. Holmes in the catch. And now Nolan Hickman sets up the offense. Salas tries to set the screen. Bolton. Rajir behind the back into the lane. And another turnover. Possession arrow gives it to Merrimack. Just a held ball. Steal by Merrimack. Boys credited. Zags with 16 turnovers now. Ed me. Oh, nice pass. Great pass. Holmgren. Tried to block it, but fouled Jordan Miner. And Miner now, guys creeping up there with 14 points, six rebounds. He's had a, ended up having a good night. Oh, Miner in the first half. Struggled 3 of 11 here in the second half and much more efficient. Now six of 17. Chad Holmgren with his 14th rebound. Warriors getting after these Gonzaga guards. Holmgren can't handle that pass. Another turnover. Miner missing that. Holmgren tipped it to himself. Gonzaga now has tied their season high with 17 turnovers. Well, ben that, Greg up off the bench. He'll come in. Sorry. With that Husky game canceled due to COVID within the Husky program, there's going to be a lot of film. There's going to be a lot of breakdowns. There's going to be a lot of Work done before they play Texas Tech and Phoenix. Bolton. From the baseline. Tough angle. Roger Bolton with six. Gonzaga up by 25. Gonzaga shooting 51% now for the game. Miner banged into Holmgren and scored. And that's what you do with the shot blocker. Go right at his chest. Try to get him off balance. Miner's huge. 6'8", 240. He's a good player. Third team all conference last year. And nearly another turnover there. 
Miner out of Kingston, Massachusetts. Holmgren, Bolton, Watson, all out of the game. Arlauskas, Ben Gregg, Matthew Lang on the floor for GU. Well, guys, Gonzaga's got, what, nine days of practice now before they have to play Texas Tech. Well, sometimes what you need is a break. In other words, maybe it's just a couple days, like, don't touch the ball, get out of the gym, find something else to do. You know, the, the season can grind on you some. Hunter Salas on the move, spinning, ducks in. It's the leader. That's good. This is going to be really, really good. Yes. That's really good. I know uh, Richard Fox was buying stock in Omar Ballo a season ago. I'm buying stock in Hunter Salas. Yep, yep. Yeah, way to go out on a limb, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Real brave. Yeah, McDonald's All-American. <laughs> Gonzaga hoops play of the game brought to you by Multicare Health System to stay in the game. Five of them tonight. He's done a really good job against the zone, just using the ball fake and kind of shifting that defense. Five assists for Watson, only one turn. Finished with nine points, ten rebounds. Those ten rebounds tying a career high. Ended up uh, two assists shy of a career high. Great all-around game for Anton Watson. And after what he suffered through with those shoulder injuries, pretty cool to see him evolve and well, become the player that he wanted to become. Yeah, and it, to, be, to be doing it in your hometown. Yeah. Ed Mead. That shot for three is off by Ryan Isaacson. Joe Few with the basketball. Here's Matthew Lang. View. Will Graves. Graves dialing up the three ball. Brought the rain. Gonzaga to 80. Ed Mead at the other end. He answers right back. That's going to be our final score. 80 to 55. Gonzaga with three players in double figures. Julian Strother, Drew Timmy, Chet Holmgren. 57 consecutive games now won here in this building. Tip your cap to Merrimack. They uh, played themselves proud tonight.